show talking about how it was talking about transitioning from a prison environment to a environment out in the free world okay and the um <clears throat> this particular video is going to be about some of the challenges that you face especially in the form of mental hardships um you know, I always talk about different challenges, it seems. Um, and I I also seem to say, um, a lot. So that's something that you'll have to put up with. So I'm going to talk about some of the stresses and things that you go through. All right. Now, <clears throat> that being said, um, before I get to that, I also want to just put in this video a little bit about how I took all my videos down. If I can find them, I'll try to put them back up. I took all my videos down from when I first started this series. I got frustrated. I didn't feel like I was helping anybody. I didn't really think anybody cared about the videos. So I stopped making them for a while and I took all my videos down. I didn't see the point. <clears throat> so, some of the challenges that you encounter. I've talked about credit, talked about financial challenges, I've talked about a few psychological challenges that deal with anxiety and stuff like that. Um, this time, I am going to talk about Challenges that are of a psychological nature, kind of from a different standpoint, I guess. Um, so, one of the things about prison, a few things about prison that I really enjoyed. Oddly enough, there are things about prison that you find enjoyable after a while people prison tends to be a very tight-knit community I was a very reclusive person in prison I didn't really come out of my cell that much I guess sometimes I say that but I knew everybody it seemed like one day when I was on the electric crew my boss and I and my co-workers were walking across the yard and it seemed like every other person that we passed said hi to me and we walked by a cell house and everybody was yelling out their windows hey they're all trying to say hi to me see how I was doing what I was up to and my boss said you know you know way too many people and it's just that prison is a really tight-knit community. If you conduct yourself in a manner that is respectful, you know, if you have integrity, respect, you're polite to people, that gets you really, really far in prison because that's really all you have. You don't have a bunch of material stuff. You know, it's, it's not about what you have, it's about who you are. And because I carried myself with respect and integrity, that got me very far and people liked me and I got along with people and you know so in a tight-knit community like that you build a lot of connections with people <clears throat> out here that's not really the case interactions seem to be very hollow a lot of interactions nowadays take place on social media um, and I live in a town of like 120 people. And I'm, I don't talk 
to any of them because I don't have any commonality. You know, in prison, you, you all eat in the same place. You all go to your religious call-outs in the same place. You go work out in the same place. You don't have much choice but to meet people. Here, you know, there's no reason for me to be at the same place at the same time as most of the other people in this town. So, um, I don't meet them. I don't know. I don't have those social connections. And the social connections that I do have on social media are hollow. It's like people say hi, they show your concern for you or whatever, or interest in you, which amounts to a like or whatever. And maybe if you're having a bad day or something, it's thoughts and prayers, uh, sending thoughts and prayers your way. Oh yeah, thanks. It's so stupid. It is the most artificial interaction you can have with a human being, in my opinion. It's just dumb. Super dumb. Uh, hanging out with friends or interacting with friends is not sending somebody a message. It's going out together and doing something. You know, let's go hit the weights together. Let's go fight each other. Let's go wrestle or something. Let's go play some music together. Let's go play cards. Let's go do something together. That's an interaction. So that's something that I miss about prison. The other thing is the simplification of all of it and the structure of all of it. You know, you have a, a set time that you get up and eat. You have a set time that you go to work, come back from work. It's all very structured. You have a set time that you go to your religious call-outs or other appointments during the week. It's not based around, you know, I'll do it when I do it. Or, you know, work ends when, you know, we feel like stopping. It's not how it works. Um, you know, it was so structured. Everything was structured. And even your clothes. You know, you had three or four pair of jeans, depending on what facility you were in. You had a few shirts. Don't mind my dog in the background. That's what that noise is. I think he's doing somersaults. Anyway, you had three or four pair of jeans. You had a few pair of shirts. A few pair of boxers, you know, and a few pair of socks. That's what you had. It took up minimal space. It worked. You had days that you did laundry. You know, you... Everything was structured. It was great. That might sound odd, but it adds so much order into your life. You know exactly what you're doing and when you're doing it. And out here, it's sort of chaotic. You know, you, everything is mismatched. Everything is randomized. You know, you do stuff when it's convenient. Which is weird. Because when it's convenient, it's almost like when it's not convenient at all. Because you have a million other things going on. I guess. One of the things I like about here, though, I have a nifty little tobacco pipe. Very nice. I enjoy it. So, um, what does all of this amount to? Well, I would say that not having structure creates a great degree of uncertainty in one's life. Um, some people might like that. I'm not one of those people. I like knowing exactly what I'm going to do and exactly when I'm going to do it. 
Uh, lack of uncertainty can create a little bit of anxiety. Um, very much so. Like if I, yeah, I'm not even going to get into it, but, um, you know, that's one aspect of it. I, I enjoy my time to be very, very structured when it's not, I am very unhappy. Another thing is a lack of real, meaningful social interactions. Um, that has an effect. It makes you feel very isolated. Um, and when you feel isolated, sometimes you don't really feel that valued. Um, so there's that. And jobs have an impact on it too so i almost forgot about this so i have a good job in in the sense that i work for good people uh, my boss is a really cool guy my co-workers are really cool individuals i, I really enjoy being around them uh that's good i make money i don't make nearly as much as i need to sustain myself and accomplish my goals which is problematic uh, the other problem that I have with my job is it's not something that I'm passionate about or that I have a huge interest in. It's a job that I have because it's about the only place around here where I could get hired. Um, and even then, it was a friend of mine that got me hired at this place. So, I don't have a lot of other options for jobs. This is pretty much it for right now. And other options aren't very plentiful. I've, I've not stopped looking. So... And it, it also takes up a lot of my my time during the day. So I go to work at about 6 in the morning. I'll get off of work usually after 4.30, sometimes after 5. And it's about a 25, 20 to 25 minute drive home from work. So sometimes I don't get home till six or a little bit later uh, sometimes I'll make it home around five but it's odd to spend so much of my time doing something that I'm not that interested in and when you're done with it you know I'm doing construction so when I'm done with my job for the day I'm usually pretty tired I don't really feel like doing a lot you know, I want to take care of my dogs, make myself something to eat, and go to bed so I can get up again the next day and do it and not be late. I don't have a lot of time for much else. So even if I had social re interactions right now, uh, opportunity for social interactions, I should say, I probably wouldn't have them anywhere. Like, I haven't been to my sister's house in forever. Not because I don't like going there. But because A, I don't have any fuel, and B, I need to get home so I can get to bed at a decent hour. Otherwise, I'm going to be worthless at 6 a.m., you know, when I head to work. Which I get up before that, so I have a little bit of time to gather myself and do my morning workout. So, you know, when you... Don't feel like you're doing something meaningful with your life. That creates a problem. Because then you add all those things, you know, the anxiety, lack of social interaction, not feeling valued by others. Uh, I should say lack of social interaction with depth, with significance. Um, a lack of feeling valued, a lack of community, and a lack of purpose in your life.
that creates a problem because you get to a point where you're just like, you know, why am I doing this? What is the point of all this? Why am I trying? And then that can get you into a steep slope of depression. And you start to think that your life doesn't have any meaning. So, I'm talking about challenges here, but I'm not talking about a lot of solutions for those challenges, because I don't have them. When I figure that out, I'll get back with you. I'm Eric. I hope this video was insightful in some way for you. Have a good day.